Hi guys, Matt Hetherington here with MHTableTennis.com. I'm taking a little bit of a break today from doing the service tutorial videos. I've put out nine of them already and you can find them in the Service Masterclass playlist on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash MHTableTennis. And today I just want to focus a little bit more on uh, a little bit closer to home. Uh, obviously a lot of you are stuck at home now and missing the Table Tennis Club and missing being able to play and you're looking for things that can help you still work on your table tennis a little bit or stay active and so I thought I'd go over some different things that uh, help with your coordination uh, with your physical training different parts of the body for physical training um, and then also obviously some table tennis skills that you could work on uh, depending on what what things you have at your disposal uh, first though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that I built last night, which you can see behind me. And basically, uh, I saw a couple of other players constructing or using return boards, and I'm on day 18 now um, of self-isolation, and obviously I've had nobody to play with, and it's been a long break for me. And so I decided at 4 o'clock this morning, that I was going to build my own return board using some old sheets of rubber and a thick piece of wood. And so here's a couple of videos that I put together that show you the process of me building my return board and then me testing it out this morning. Okay, obviously not everybody has a table at their house and not everybody has used rubber or anything that they can build a return board with. So not everyone can actually play any table tennis or have anybody returning boards to them. And that is a situation where really you need to start working more on physical training. So making sure that your body is in good shape and this is something that everybody that's in isolation or stuck at home should be doing every day anyway. And there are a few things that are really handy if you have them. The first one is a skipping rope or a jump rope. This is something that I try and use every day and I find it's a very good opportunity to get out of the house and even if it's into your yard or your driveway um, or just outside your front doorstep, this is a very good opportunity. You need to spend time outdoors. You cannot stay in your house in the dark watching TV um, the entire time that you're stuck at home. You need to take some time out outside, get some sunlight, some fresh air, jump rope, perfect opportunity to do that. Um, I try and get in at least a thousand single jumps in one go or in one session. And sometimes I'm doing two sessions in a day. Um, and I'm alternating between that and treadmill. So I'm really fortunate here that I have a treadmill that I can run on. Um, so yes, jump roping and treadmill, or even a little bit of running, great things for you to do. Next, it's a resistance band. So if you have some of these at home, then you're in luck, because these are really, really useful for physical training, and you really don't need that much space. So you can use these anywhere, and also they're very versatile, so you can use them for different parts of your legs, glutes, hip flexors, you can use them for core rotation depending on what type of uh, resistance bands you have. Um, I have some kind of more resistant ones, so I find they're really good for using with my legs. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things that you can do with these now. So you can start off by putting it around your feet or around your shoes. So it's kind of like this, around the middle front part of your shoes. And a good place to start is just to bring your knee up to about 90 degrees. 
Okay, so you're going to pull up to 90 degrees, up to 90 degrees. Okay, and you're going to do that with both legs. Okay, this is really good for glutes and hip flexors, which are often underworked when people are working out on table tennis. Okay, and then you can take it a little bit further and work on those hip abductors a little bit more, and then turn to the side and then back. This also helps a little bit with core because you're having to keep your core tight. Okay, and you can do that with both legs. Then, if you move your resistance band around your ankles and hold on to something here, you can push out here. So this is usually something that people really overlook. A lot of people will do workouts that build leg strength like squats um, or lunges, but there's a lot of different muscle groups going on and you have to make sure that you're taking care of all of those muscle groups because they all work together to support each other. So I find these exercises are really good for strengthening glutes and hip flexors, um, which is really good for supporting back muscles and core. Next, you can bring it further up, so just above your knees, and this is a good one for doing squat walks. So you can start low like this, and then just bring your feet together and apart, making sure that you stay low. Okay. And also, just adding resistance on your legs for squats. So when you come down here, this tightens, and you really have to push your knees out against the resistance. Okay, so push your knees out. So there are some just quick demonstrations of things you can do with a resistance band. You can find more on Google, even if you go to Google Images. You can just look for resistance band workouts, and you'll find a lot of stuff there. A lot of you don't have any equipment that you can use. You need to start looking for things that have a little bit of weight that can add to just doing plain body workouts. So for example, especially at a time like this, I have two, I guess they're, no, two one gallon bottles of water. So that's almost four kgs on each side, or about nine pounds. So you can use things like this to do your workouts. So I'll show you an example of something you can do with these. Things like this would be really good for adding weight to lunges. Okay, so you can lunge forward and just have that added weight down here. Okay, so lunge forward and then up. Okay, lunge forward and then up. Forward and then up. Forward and up. Okay, you can also add them, even if you're doing squats, if you just hold them like this and then do your squats this way, just to add some more to just body weight, so adding a little bit of extra weight. Even something as simple as doing bicep curls, okay? Lots of things around the house. I've seen people doing workouts with pumpkins, so everybody should be able to find something in their house that they can use to add some, some weight. Of course, if you don't have any of this stuff, then you can still do body weight workouts. So there's a lot of abdominal workouts squats, mountain climbs. There are so many different exercises that you can do just with body weight. Um, nobody really has an excuse not to be working out. And if you wanna come back and improve your table tennis, things that you can work on are explosive, building explosive power in the legs. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that build explosive power. And then something that helps build speed or even lateral movement. Or you can just do things like table tennis shadow drills. Okay, so let's say you want to do something that builds explosive power in your legs. You could do something like tuck jumps. Okay, so you can put your hands up and push up this way. Okay, uh, you could do frog jumps. Okay, so frog jumps are this kind of thing where you're really building explosive movement. Another good one is to set down two markers. So you can use anything you want. But I can set down two markers and then push laterally, okay? So I'm working on explosive lateral movements from side to side. 
and I'm really pushing off one leg at a time. Another good training drill that you could do outside is shuttle sprints. So you can set markers and then sprint or even sidestep quickly where you're exploding from a starting position and then stopping and then coming back. So there's a lot of start and stop that helps you with body recovery and also with building speed and stamina. Um, you can, if you have a table, you can do this uh, side step around the table, touching the net posts with the same hand. There's a lot of exercises that you can do to build speed. So we're looking at short bursts of very fast activity and then recovery. Okay, so it's very important for speed training that you work in short bursts. Okay, so it mimics a table tennis point. Everything happens very quickly in a short space of time and then you need to improve your body's recovery after completing that short burst of physical activity. Okay, so any kind of speed exercises with footwork involved that help you with that are very helpful for your table tennis, building that, uh, that stamina in your system and recovery. Of course, failing all else, if you really want to do something directly table tennis related, you can do shadow practice. Okay, so that helps you focus on your strokes and your footwork together. So you can pick drills like uh, one backhand, one step around, forehand, one forehand. You don't even need a table. You just need to work in a kind of imaginatory dimensions of a table. And you can play one backhand, one step around, one forehand, and repeat maybe sets of five, five sets of 20, or you can do sets of 10 and then do it for seven and a half minutes. And you can still have a good mental training session by doing that kind of thing. And it's really important because doing things mentally still helps build your muscle memory, which in turn then helps when you actually do the drills with the ball and with a training partner. So take some time for those of you that are in isolation, for those of you that are indoors and at home, concentrate on staying active. Okay, you need to do physical training. Okay, this is the perfect time. There are no excuses. If you can work out with a pumpkin, nobody has an excuse. Okay, they're actually calling it venture science. Okay, you can get a vegetable and work out. Okay, so there are no excuses. You need every day to do some kind of physical activity. Spend some time outside. Okay, you need fresh air, you need sunlight. These are very important, not just for your body, but for your mental state as well. Okay, otherwise you're gonna spend all your time inside. Very unhealthy for you psychologically. Okay, and then when we look at table tennis training or training from home, different exercises, we can do explosive power, coordination, speed, okay, speed training. So anything that helps you with your game or build your physical strength, try and think of all different muscle groups. Don't just focus on legs or core. Okay, try and broaden your horizons a little bit. And then, of course, watch some table tennis, okay? Take some time to watch some table tennis. It's the best thing that you can do. You'll feel nostalgic and removed from the game, but it is the closest that you're gonna to get to, for we don't know how long, to actually seeing some high-level table tennis, okay? So whether you're watching tutorial videos or training videos or top international matches, take some time to watch some table tennis um, and I hope you're all safe and I hope that you stay safe and you stay home and look after yourselves and use this time. Use this time and it's, use it as an opportunity to work on some parts of your game that you wouldn't usually work on, perhaps. Okay, a lot of people just go to their clubs and go and play matches or practice. They don't work on this kind of stuff. So you have an opportunity here to build something positive and to use some of these exercises or start looking into different ways that you can train your body and your mind to help you when you get back on the table. Okay, good luck everyone, and make sure you get those workouts in every day.